We also have some sections in the Act which are called deemed donations. Now, as you've already started to see in the Act in your study so far, deemed means you're treated as if it is something. So it's a pretend or we will assume it is. So deemed donations means they will treat it as if, the, if these things happen that there is a donation. There is deemed to be a donation. So the first one is section 57. Section 57 is if this is disposal by a company on behalf of someone else. So basically the idea here is if I have a, a PTY limited, right, and you will see it is important that it is a PTY limited because um, there's no donations tax payable by public companies. Yeah, public companies are things like X Limited, ABC Limited, the Limiteds, right. There's no donation tax payable, they're exempt, something that you'll study separately. But the P2O Limiteds, private companies, they are not exempt. So usually a private company is, yeah, uh, here's me, Mr. X, and I create a little company, right, so <laughs> I don't know why it looks like a weird jar. It's a company, right? Uh, it's obviously not a uh, necessarily a physical place. It's a concept. So Mr. X creates a company and he does his business for this company. Now this company has some money in it. Mr. X goes to this company and says to this company, please pay or make a donation to my daughter's school. Right, or my daughter's school band. She's part of the school band, let's say. <laughs> if you even get something like that. A school orchestra? I don't know. They play music at the school. So, Mr. X says to the company, please make a donation. Now, what this section 57 says is, if the owner of a company or shareholders, people that have an influence on the company, use that influence to tell the company to make a donation to someone, and that donation was actually their donation. If you think about it, Mr. X is probably the one making the donation to the school's band. Why would the company? Then, Section 57 says, Mr. X is treated as if he made the donation. So here we read in the Act. If any property is disposed of by any company at the in instance of any person, and that disposal would have been treated as a donation had that disposal been made by that person, that property must, for the purpose of this part, be deemed to be disposed of under a donation by that person. Right. So they say any company, so if a public company does the same thing, guys, it would apply there. It's just very unlikely to see that usually it's the private companies, because public companies usually have more shareholders. But it can be possible. Right. So that's section 57. Section 57, capital A says if you're married in community of property and you make a, a donation of property as part of the joint estate, remember if you are married in community of property, Mr. X and Mrs. X, if you are in community of property, then all of your assets sit in this joint estate. So let's say you've got a million rands in your bank account. That forms part of your joint estate. So if Mr. X decides to donate that million rands to his son, if you marry a community property, they'll treat it as if Mr. X donated 500,000 and Mrs. X donated 500,000. Even though Mr. X might have made the decision and everything about it, which was part of the joint estate. So here we go. For the purpose of this part, in the case of spouses married in community of property, where any property is disposed of in terms of a donation by one of the spouses and such property falls within the joint estate, such donation shall be deemed to have been made in equal shares by each spouse. So the million rands forms part of the joint estate, so each spouse is deemed to have made equal donation. And if such property was excluded from the joint estate, such donation shall be deemed to have been made solely by the spouse making the donation. So, Mr. X, they have a prenuptial or an antenuptial agreement. When they got married, it said, yes, we are married in community of property, 
but that million rands are in there is only Mr. X's for whatever reason they've had that agreement. Maybe he inherited it from his mother. If Mr. X then made that donation to his son, only Mr. X will be paying donations tax on that million rands. Right, if it was excluded. And then section 58. This is an important one, guys. The one that pops up every now and then. If you sell something at less than its market value, then that difference between what you sold it for and the market value is treated as a donation. So, Mr. X sells a boat which is worth 100,000 rands to his son for 80,000 rands. Can you see? That 20,000 rands difference, they'll treat it as if he made a donation to his son of that. So, where any property has been disposed of for consideration, which in the opinion of the commissioner is not an adequate consideration, so if it's less than market value, that property shall for the purpose of this part be deemed to have been disposed of under donation, provided that in the determination of the value of such property, a reduction shall be made for an amount equal to the value of the said consideration. So what are they saying? They're saying the donation is treated as if it's actually, in this situation here at the bottom, if it's actually 100,000 rands, but there will be a reduction for the amount of the consideration. So this is the amount paid. So you'll say, what is the consideration paid? 80,000, so that gets deducted. So the 20,000 is the donation. That is what this section tells us.